Today we are pitting the Rogue Echo Bike against the Fringe Sport Raptor. Woo! The No Fate Channel, checking in. Jonathan here, and today I've got the Fringe Sport Raptor, or should I say the Rogue Echo Bike Killer. That's right, we're gonna do a complete review on this air bike, and then we're gonna compare it head to head to the Rogue Echo Bike. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome aboard. I review new pieces of home gym equipment every week. For those of you not familiar with an air bike, also known as an Aerodyne, an Echo Bike, or my personal choice, the Devil's Bike. It is a brutal piece of cardio equipment that is designed to kill calories, to absolutely burn fat and absolutely give you that cardiovascular exercise your body needs. I will tell you straight away, it looks fairly simple. You pump your legs, you move your arms, and you are off to the races. But it is not like a spin bike or uh, a glide or even an elliptical machine at the gym. The harder you push, the more resistance there is. And this thing is absolutely absolutely brutal. You can do extremely high intensity circuits, high intensity intervals, as well as medium distance. I personally have found that long distance, anything over 25 minutes, is frankly extremely uncomfortable and not manageable. An air bike takes up a relatively small footprint in your home gym, and that's ideal because typically in a home gym, space is at a premium. An air bike also delivers exceptional performance, and I personally would take this over an elliptical, a treadmill, a ski erg, or even a Concept 2 rower. The Fringe Sport Raptor absolutely was designed and built to be an Echo Bike killer. The Rogue Echo Bike has been around for quite some time and is a beloved air bike. However, the Raptor comes in at three pounds heavier at 150 total pounds um, than the Echo Bike. It also has a wider base, allowing for better stability coming in at 24 inches. Now, one of the biggest complaints or issues with the Echo Bike were the accessories. You had to pay extra for them, and some of those accessories were ones that you absolutely need if you're gonna be using the air bike constantly. However, Raptor comes with all the accessories that the Rogue doesn't. It comes with a cup holder, it comes with your phone holder, an air guard, and amazing turf tires. Like the Echo Bike, the Raptor uses a belt drive, which is virtually maintenance free. Also, it comes with free shipping and a three year warranty. Cost, usually the number one factor everyone uses in order to choose their home gym equipment. And the Raptor and the Echo Bike are damn near identical. So the Raptor from Fringe Sport retails at $1,000, but it does come with the aggressive wheels, the handle in the back, as well as the phone holder, the cup holder, and the actual air guard that is a must when you have an air bike. Keep in mind that $1,000 is MSRP and Fringe Sport does run a number of sales almost every other week. When you compare apples to apples between the two bikes, they are identical in cost because, of course, the Rogue Echo bike starts off less than the Raptor, but once you add in all the attachments, it goes right up to that $1,000 price point. Keep in mind, though, that if you have a home gym inside and you don't expect to be wheeling around your Echo bike very often, you do not need to get the oversized wheels, and that will save you $90. For me, with my Echo bike, it's in the basement, and it is not going anywhere so I almost never use the bad wheels that they came with and I certainly don't need additional turf wheels. Which attachments are a must-have when it comes to an air bike? Number one first and foremost is the wind guard. Even if you work out in a constantly hot environment that all that air blowing in your face is not refreshing it's in fact extremely annoying. The other thing that we absolutely need at least I found out is a phone holder. We can't go 30 seconds without grabbing our phones so having a place to store your phone is ideal, especially if you're gonna be using it to view content if you're gonna be going longer on your air bike. Two attachments that are certainly nice to have but not 100% needed. First is going to be the water bottle holder. Obviously, when it comes to an air bike, you tend to be moving extremely fast and you don't have a lot of time to grab water and, and take a sip. Usually, you're either working out on it or you're not. So I think this is one of those things that's just nice to have but certainly not something I would pay extra for. The other thing are the turf wheels. Now, if you work out in an environment where you're gonna be moving your air bike often into position, out of position, Position, or maybe even moving it into your driveway or into your garage where you're going to be going over some turf. Yeah, those turf bike wheels are nice. 
The Fringe Sport Raptor also overcame another major issue that the Rogue Echo Bike deals with, and that is usage by shorter individuals. If you are a short king, if you are under five foot four, unfortunately, it's really uncomfortable, and in some cases, you can't even use the Echo Bike because you cannot reach the handles and the feet at the same time. For the Fringe Sport Raptor, height is not an issue. I had my son on here, he's four foot nine inches tall. He was able to use this no problem and the seat wasn't at its lowest setting. Conversely, he still can't use my Echo Bike. The four big things I like about the Fringe Sport Raptor over the Echo Bike, number one, and this is probably the biggest, are the handles. The Echo Bike handles are thick and frankly just don't feel comfortable, whereas the thinner diameter Fringe Sport Raptor handles, they feel good. They feel like you can really drive hard and it's not going to kill your grip. The other thing that I appreciate more on the Raptor is the seat adjustability. It's a lot less cumbersome, a lot easier to adjust the seat height up and down, as well as the seat pad front to back. Also, the Fringe Sport has a longer warranty coming in at three years, and that's something I do like to see. Last but not least, I really appreciate the fact that Fringe Sport doesn't nickel and dime you for the accessories. Conversely, the four major things I liked about the Echo Bike over the Raptor, number one being the control panel. Now, both of the control panels work and operate and have all the same readouts as one another, but the Echo Bike feels better. The buttons just are nicer to push, and it just has a better design and visibility. The other thing was the phone holder. The phone holder on the Raptor is right in front of the screen. So when you put your phone there, you really can't see your pace or your calories or even the interval time. Whereas as the Echo Bike has a lower phone holder, making it able to see both at the same time. Now, both the Raptor and the Echo Bike feel extremely durable. I mean, commercial grade, that you could put this into a CrossFit gym and not worry about this thing getting torn apart in under a year. I will say, though, comparing the two, if I had to pick one, I feel like the Echo Bike just has a slightly tougher, more durable feel when in operation. And now it's time. It is time for Fate of the Union, where I give you my final thoughts on these two air bikes. First and foremost, both of them are commercial grade. Both could end up in a local gym or a CrossFit box without any issues. And both of these bikes are gonna last for years and years and years in your home gym with zero maintenance required. But you can only pick one, and I think a lot of people are gonna wanna go towards the Raptor. Reason being, few issues. Number one is that, frankly, it comes with all the accessories that you could possibly need. You're not nickel and dime. Number two is that there are a lot of things that I like better about about the Raptor over the Echo Bike, especially if you are shorter or if you just like the longer warranty. And number three, probably the most important, is that you're gonna be able to pick this up for less money. At face value, they look to be exactly the same price with the accessories included. However, Fringe Sport does usually run 10 or even 15% off sales every two weeks, every three weeks. So clearly, if you've got your eyes on the prize, you could pick this up for 150 less than the Echo Bike. Do not sleep on the Fringe Sport Raptor. There's a lot of great things that are better than the Echo Bike. Which bike is right for me? Without any sales involved, I have to go with the Echo Bike. Number one, I'm not gonna use the turf tires, and that's $90 I can save out the gate. And number two, when using both bikes, I felt that the Echo Bike had just a hair better build quality. And I don't know if that was perception versus reality, but it is something that I noticed. And again, it was slight, but overall, I got to go with the Echo Bike if all things are equal. If you made it this far in the video, give the video a like, hit that red subscribe button. You and I are officially best friends. And I do not want to see the subscribe button red. I want to see it gray. Pronto, shot, shot, lollipop. You heard it from here, him first. Let, drop your comments down below on what you think between the Echo Bike and the Raptor. Which one's going to be right for you? As usual, thanks for watching, but don't save anything for, for the... Chip back. He knows, he knows.